What's going on y'all, Josh Miller here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about why you should be using cinema lenses. Now, first things first, let me just get it out of the way that cinema lenses are not always the right tool for the job. There are times when an autofocus lens is going to be the right choice for the job. If you're solo operating, something like that, you know, um, if the budget doesn't allow for it, an, a manual focus lens might not be the option. A cinema lens might not be the option. An autofocus photo lens might be the might might be the right move, and I still to this day will occasionally use photo lenses. But I want to just I want we're going to be talking today about why uh, the why of why you would use a cinema lens. Uh, what how is it going to serve the purpose of the story? How is it going to assist uh, with what you're doing? So. Yeah, but today we're gonna to be using the DZO Vespid Cinema Lenses. These are amazing lenses that they sent to me out on a loaner, and I've used them on projects before they sent them to me, and I've been using them since they sent them to me. So, love these lenses. They're amazing, amazing build quality. The size of them is, you know, I love the size of them. So, I'm gonna be showing you guys talking about cinema lenses using the Vespids today. And I'm gonna be breaking this down into two parts, but first we're gonna be talking about technical things about the lenses, about why, you know, what is it technically that makes cinema lenses, cinema lenses. And then I wanna also talk about creative reasons as well. So jumping right into technical. So the first thing that you're gonna notice about cinema lenses is probably the gears on the outside of the lens. The reason for this is to be able to have a, it's called a follow focus, and you're gonna have a little gear that sits on the side of the camera on a rail uh, next to the lens, and that has some little teeth in it, and it goes right into these grooves on the gears. And then you have somebody called a first AC or first a camera assistant, and they're going to have a follow focus unit and they're gonna be pulling focus for you. They're gonna be doing the focus actually for you. You might say right there, you don't, why would you just use an autofocus lens? Why wouldn't you use that instead of having to have somebody do it for you? Well, here's the problem. Autofocus doesn't know how to pull focus for the story. There's gonna be times where you need the focus to go from here to here, or just, you know, it needs to be in a really specific position and autofocus doesn't know that. All it's trying to do is like either track the eye or the face in general, um, you know, and so having somebody, a human being, intelligence, that you can talk to and say, hey, okay, as I move the camera from here to here, I want you to pull focus from this spot and then to this spot. And they say, cool, copy, got it, and then they do it for you. So, like I said, again, there's times where manual focus is the right option and, and autofocus is the right option. Now, the second set of gears on a lens are now the second set of gear that are on a cinema lens are actually for the iris. And let's just say you're going from, you're on a steady cam and you're going from inside to outside. The outside is obviously more exposure than the inside. And so you can have another follow focus unit on the gear, on the iris gear, and go from like a two eight to like an eight. And they can slowly do that. And so again, you're using these for creative decisions. And then on zoom lenses, you'll actually have a third set of gears to be able to change the zoom of, you know, the focal length of the lens. And there's times when, you know, that's going to be used for a creative reason as well. Let's just say for like a Zolly, if you know what a Zolly is, it's where like the camera gets pushed in while the zoom comes out or vice versa like in Jaws or I don't know, there's a lot of movies that are like that. Jaws is just the kind of the, I, I, that's the one that's always used in examples. But those gears on the lens at the end of the day are for creative decisions, but it, it helps and assist the crew to get the job done first off and get a job, get the job done quickly. All right, next up, we're gonna be talking about the size of these lenses. So it's extremely important to be able to, again, be quick and efficient on a set. So with photo lenses, typically they're never all gonna be the same size, like the G Master Sony lenses. They're all different sizes, and that can cause a lot of issues for crews for his first AC when they're switching out lenses because like if you've got a prime lens, for example, you obviously need to switch to a different focal length. Um, and so if the lenses are the same size and if these gears are in the same spot, which they typically are with cinema lenses, then all you gotta do when you're switching out a lens is uh, pull the gears off, pull the matte box off, take the lens, you know, take the lens off, put a new lens on, and then you can just move those things back onto it and it's set and ready to go. 
these lenses have this, the, the gears are in the exact same spot. So for example, this 125 and this 75, they are different sizes lengthwise, but the gears are the in, are in the exact same spot as uh, each other. So the only thing that you would really have to do with a camera like this, like a matte box, there are cameras where there, it's called a swing away matte box and you would have rails on the camera. The, the matte box would attach to the rails and then it literally just swings away and it stays attached. You could take the lens off and put a new one on and the matte box would swing right back to where it's originally was. You would have to adjust that a little bit with these lenses. However, the ones that I'm seeing are that are different lengths are the ones that are kind of like outliers. Like you're not going to be using them on a on a huge, uh, you know, you're not going to be using them as often. Like the 125 and the 12 millimeter, super different size. Um, again, the gears are in the exact same spot, but they are a different size. But the lenses that you're probably going to be switching out the most. Uh, are all the same size, like the 50 and the 75, the, let's see, 75 and 35. Those are all the exact same size, lengthwise, everything. And so that's gonna speed up your process to be able to pull things away, put the new lens on, boom, you're ready to go, and you're done. Next up, we've got mounts. So in the world that we live in today, we're getting a lot more cinema lenses with like EF, RF, E-mount. Uh, there's a lot more, however, I love, personally love, PL mount. And PL mount is a super universal mount. And the reason why I love these is because uh, you, again, they're universal, so you can use them on, on a wide variety of cameras. As long as it has a PL mount on it, which most cinema cameras do, or at least have the option to, then you can, you know, you can buy a set of lenses, PL mount, and use them on a RED, a Canon, an Airy, uh, a Sony, and they all work the same. The only, so here's here's an example of pros and cons of, of cinema lenses and photo lenses. Typically, at least for these ones, these do not have an electronic thing that, t that talks to and connects to the camera. Um, whereas, you know, for like autofocus or for uh, controlling the iris or something like that, that is where photo lenses are nice because they typically are native mounts to that camera and they're going to talk to that camera. So there's a pro, a con of this, but the pro of a cinema lens, uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff, you can use this on a wide variety of cameras. So you're not stuck to one, you know, uh, family of cameras. And nowadays we also have that new DJI Focus Pro, I think it's called, which I really wanna get my hands on, but that's making cinema lenses that don't have autofocus have the ability to have autofocus. And that's crazy. That's, that's seriously the freaking coolest thing. So I wanna get my hands on one of those sometimes so that I can use things like my DZO Vespids or you know any prime cinema lens and have autofocus. Next, we're gonna talk about the throw of the lens. So the throw is referencing how far you need to turn the focus to get from one end to the other. With photo lenses, that throw is really, really tiny. Like literally you can just like turn it just a tiny bit and the focus is, you know, to infinity and then to minimum focus. That's cool for photos because you are just taking stills and you don't, like you're, you're taking stills. You don't need, it's just quick. You want it to be quick as possible, be able to, you know, grab focus as quick as possible. With cinema lenses, you need precision. And so having a further throw, having it be longer, it, there's gonna be more precision. It is a little bit uh, annoying whenever you're like manually pulling focus like with your hand. It can take a while and you're like, oh, come on. Like, But typically, again, you're gonna have somebody that's pulling focus for you. And the way that that handle is calibrated or like the, the gear is calibrated is once you attach it to the lens, you press the calibrate button and it'll actually spin all the way to one end and hit the hard stop. Cause it actually, if you ever, if you know a photo lens, like you can keep spinning that barrel and it'll just go forever. Um, with cinema lenses, there's actually hard stops. If you can hear that. That's the hard stop. And then if you go all the way to the other end, there's also a hard stop there. All right, so last up in terms of technical, we are talking about the difference between an F-stop and a T-stop. I'm sure you've probably seen this. So an F-stop, 
on a photography lens and I think on some cinema lenses. F-stop refers to the actual iris of the lens uh, where T-stop, so you know, the iris, the aperture inside, like the F-stop is talking about how big or how open that is. With T-stops, it's still kind of the same, but it's much more based off of how much light is coming through. So in filmmaking and in photography as well, this all started when, you know, with film, like actual film, like 35 millimeter, you couldn't see what you were shooting. And so light was measured in terms of stops. So if you uh, take a light meter and you measured something and you're getting an F 2.8, uh, that means that you, if you have all the other things on your camera set, if you set your lens to 2.8, then you know, it's gonna be perfect exposure. And I'm not gonna to get too much into this because that is very technical. I would, I mean, if you would like for me to go into super depth about light stops and light meters and all that, leave a comment below. But a T-stop is, is talking about specifically how much light is getting from that front element to the sensor. Just wanna quickly give a huge shout out to DZO for sending me these lenses on a loaner. It's been so much fun using them and I really do love their lenses. I was the one that reached out to them and said, hey, you know, could we could we do something? And they said, yeah, yeah, here you go. Here's here's some lenses to, to have for a few months. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, you can check out their website. They actually just came out with a new lens, uh, I think today or yesterday from when I am posting this video. And uh, yeah. They've got some awesome, awesome stuff. All right, so let's now talk about creative, which I feel like for me is way more fun. And uh, you know, it's creative, it's fun. There's, there's, we're talking about character. We're talking about things that make, you know, the image look cool. So, um, you know, with photography lenses, I feel like more and more photography lenses are trying to just be as perfect as possible. Um, you know, distortion, bokeh, it's just like, it's all perfect. With cinema lenses, they're definitely meant to be, you know, you wanna get a good image, but they're also meant to have character and the lenses are meant to tell the story. I mean, the difference between, uh, you know, something like this and like an anamorphic lens is widely different. Something like a, an anamorphic, like an airy anamorphic, you know, they're really, really good and crispy if you took like that compared to an old anamorphic vintage lens, completely different. So they all are meant to tell a different story, serve a different purpose in the story. So first let's talk about bokeh. And I actually just got done watching a video from Potato Jet. Uh, he was talking with one of the guys from Ari, and that's another thing, it's called Ari, it's not Ari. The So bokeh, it's, it's actually a Asian Japanese word um, and so it's not bokeh, it's bokeh. And, and, and Gene from, you know, potato jet guy, he was like, oh, I've been, I've been wondering if it was bokeh or bokeh, it's in, it's bokeh. So there you go, learn something, learn something new today. I learned something new. So bokeh is one of those things that I feel like a lot of cinematographers, at least I do, we, you love good bokeh. Uh, when things are out of focus and you're getting, you know, let's just say there's lights in the background or little pockets of sun, like getting those nice, really beautiful pieces of bokeh in the back. Again, there's different types of bokeh. So with these lenses, I actually really like the, the look of the bokeh in these. They are, um, it's, it's prominent, but it's still very milky and very smooth. Uh, I feel like when it, when it goes out of focus, it it looks really nice still. But things like the Airy Prime signature lenses, those, man, holy smokes, the bokeh on those like does crazy things. Like it gets really, really soft. I was just in Cinegear and I was looking at the Blazar lenses and those, the bokeh on those is crazy. So every lens has a little bit different bokeh. Let's, let me show you some stuff from these lenses with the bokeh. Like I said, every lens is gonna have a little bit different bokeh and that's that's the beauty of it. It's like, it's a different paintbrush. It's just portraying life a little bit differently. All right, now let's get into lens flares. So lens flares are another one of those things that I feel like, you know, it's, they can really do some really cool stuff for an image. 
Uh, with anamorphic lenses, the lens flares obviously have that iconic anamorphic look, um, but every lens is gonna have a little bit different lens flare. In more modern lenses that are meant to just be a little bit more clinical, the lens flare is not gonna be super prominent. And that's because, you know, the image, they're they're trying to just keep like a really solid image, like giving it some flare, cause that's just inevitable. And, and so lean into that, give it some nice flare, a little bit of flare. But if a flare consumes the image, like if, you know, if it hits the sun or something and the whole image just blows out, you don't want that because now the image is gone. So you know, these manufacturers, they're going to do things to just help with that. So let me show you some test footage from these Vespids, different focal lengths, and then I'm gonna show you the, uh, I've got a Sigma 24 to 70 art lens, and I'll show you the lens flares at the same focal lengths as that. I feel like with cinema lenses, they are, you know, they're they're trying to have again more character and and just have some artistic touch to them. So these lens flares, I think, are pretty intentional. Uh, they're not just like, oh, you know, it just that's how it is. Like they're they're gonna do things to get specific lens flares. When you're pulling focus, you don't want what's called lens breathing. Lens breathing is when, as you're focusing from, you know, let's just say a foreground to a background element, the whole image kind of moves. It kind of does this like woo woo thing. You want that focus to just focus. Like you don't, you just want to see the focus move. Um, however, there are times where, you know, I've seen lots of movies where there is lens breathing and that was the artistic choice. So, you know, I sometimes say you don't want that. And I, you know, it's like the, you never do that or you always do that. Like you, that those words are, are, you gotta be very careful with that because there's always rules that are meant to be broken and there's always exceptions. And at the end of the day, this is art. So do, you know, whatever you love, whatever you think looks good. So these lenses have a little bit of breathing in them. Um, not too much though that I, it like I, annoys me at all. And you know, again, you're not gonna be doing this a lot. So it's not like that lens breathing, if it is there, it's not gonna be super annoying. All right, so next with cinema lenses, why you would want to use cinema lenses if you're shooting cinematography. So when they make these lenses, they make them so that they all have the same look and color. And now you might say, well, what do you mean the same look and color? Isn't that, it's not. Each lens is going to do different things. It's gonna have different color rendition. It's going to have different contrast. And you don't want that whenever you're shooting like a movie or something. You want everything to look the same from focal length to focal length. So when they make these lenses, they're going to match them all to each other. Yo, so this is a separate day. Forgot to add this in when I was filming the other day, uh, but forgot to talk about sharpness. So sharpness is very interesting because you need to have uh, sharp images, you know, to have things be in focus, but you don't wanna have too sharp of an image. Um, and cinema lenses seem to be this really nice, this is one of the reasons why I think a lot of people choose cinema lenses because they have a really like sharp image in terms of things being in focus, uh, but they're not so sharp to where you can see like details of pores. Um, you don't want that. You don't want things to be so sharp that it just like looks video. That When, when, when people talk about the difference between film and and like digital video, like actual film and digital video, one of the things that they referred are, are referring to is the sharpness of the image. Uh, film has this very just kind of like smooth look to it, 
but things are like still sharp, like things are still in focus. And maybe there's just a difference between focus and things in focus and sharpness. Uh, one of the things I love about the DZO lenses as well is that the, it has that nice middle ground. It's it's has like a nice kind of smooth image, but things still feel in focus. And one of the signs of a great lens is if you can be wide open. So these lenses, they open all the way up to a 2.1, 2 2.1, T2.1. And these all the way open still have a really nice in focus look. Uh, things still look soft, but things look in focus. And just to show you comparison, here is the Sigma 24 to 70 again. This is gonna be at 50 millimeters and the Vespid's at 50 millimeters as well. So to wrap this up, why should you use cinema lenses? Why? Like, what is your why? Why do you want to use them? Why would it benefit the project? If it doesn't benefit the project, then don't use them. Um, so yeah, like that's, I, I can't give you a straight answer and I hate people that give straight answers because I think it's very dependent on the project. Um, I love using cinema lenses because I want to make things look as filmic as possible and I think that helps. It makes it so it's not so clinical, that it has a little bit more of a, of um, you know, just haze to it or, or, you know, things bloom a little bit differently rather than just being super sharp and, uh, just look very video. But like I said, I use, I use photography lenses a lot too. Like when I need something that has autofocus, I use photography lenses and, uh, you know, maybe I'll throw like, uh, uh, a promise filter in front of it or something just to kind of soften it up a tad and make it look a little less video, a little less sharp. All right, y'all, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below about cinema lenses in general or about the Vespid specifically. Uh, yeah, love to hear your thoughts about why you think you should use cinema lenses or why not. You know, and if you are, why you do, and if you don't, why you don't, and you know, all the things. Um, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel, follow along, got plenty more content coming out. And also follow me on Instagram where there's daily content coming out. Um, if you haven't already, I have free storyboard templates. Uh, they're totally free. Just use the link down below and download. It is a tool that will help you become a better filmmaker overnight. Lenses are great, but if you don't know what the heck you're shooting and if you don't have a plan in mind, lenses won't help you. I mean, like, sure, they might take the edge off and help make it look a little bit more beautiful, but you need to have a game plan. So free storyboard template down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.